And before you can start spinning on a hand spindle, you're going to need a leader, which is just a piece of yarn. This is wool because I'm going to be spinning wool. And I'm going to tie it on under the whorl. You want to tie it tightly so that it doesn't spin around and twist around. That's all there is to attaching a leader. Before we actually start spinning, I want to go into a little bit of the mechanics of using the high whorl spindle. This is one of my favorite spindles. It's high whorl, has a hook, and a nice long shaft. It's rather heavy, so it's good for medium to thicker yarn and is great um, for spinning yarn for socks, hats, and mittens. Spinning on a, a high whirl spindle, if you're going to manipulate the spindle with your right hand, you will be rolling up your leg toward your body. This puts what's called a Z or a clockwise twist into the fiber and that's the traditional way uh, for most cultures to spin the first ply of yarn. So I've got my leader on and I'm going to just roll, give it a good flip and flick it with my fingers as it comes up my leg to get it spinning. If you're spinning, now I'm going to take that twist out, if you're spinning with your left hand, you're going to go the opposite. You're going to go down your leg. Down, roll down the leg. Then when it comes time to ply, you'll do exactly the opposite. With your right hand, you'll roll down. With your left hand, you'll roll up. We're ready to spin. I've got my leader. Some people have trouble attaching the yarn to the leader. So I've stolen a trick from the spinning wheel and I've tied a little overhand knot with the loop large enough for my little finger to stick through. I'm going to use that loop to help snag my yarn. I've got a knitted wrist distaff on and I'm going to fold the extra fiber and tuck it in that because I don't want the extra fiber getting caught in my leader or my spindle and it happens a lot if you don't tuck it out of the way. I'm going to take my little loop and I've drawn out the fiber a little bit and I've doubled it over. Now I can spin it on. I'm going to give this a good twist and I'm going to start by parking and spinning. Now I've given it two good twists so there, as you can see there's a lot of twist in this leader. Now I'm going to park this between my knees and start drafting out. I'll go about an inch and a half and let that twist in and now my leader and my fiber are securely attached. Now I can draft back a little bit more and let the twist in. I'm going to spin a fairly thick yarn because this is a heavy spindle. When you run out of twist, it's time to give one more little bit of twist and then wind on. I like a softly spun yarn so I don't add a lot of extra twist to my yarns. Very often you'll see people spinning on spindles that really add a lot of twist and it's not necessary. Again, I'm winding it on, catch it in the hook, the little notch, and you want about six inches. Give it a good roll, get lots of twist, park, and I'm going to pinch off in front and draft back with my left hand open and let the twist come in. Draft back, open. I'm going to pinch off at, at the rear before the, the fiber supply and let that twist go in. That's drafting. And I'll wind it on. That's all there is to spinning.
Now I've been doing it with my right hand. You can do it with your left hand if you want. There's no right or wrong way to spin and draft. Another way to control your fiber is just to wrap it around your wrist. Now because I'm going to be drafting with my right hand and putting the twist in with my left, remember I have to be pushing down my leg. And I'm not as good at doing it this way because I don't practice it this way. Again, I'm going to park. Then I'm going to draft. Now you can see this fiber has a pretty long staple, so I'm having to, to hold back to draft. I can't pinch it right here and draft back. Now I'll wind it on. Hold the yarn rather tight while you're winding it on so that you get a nice neat cup. You don't want it to just slop on. Now I'm ready to continue. Let me show you how I'm drafting up close. I'm going to give the spindle a whirl and then I would park it. I'm going to let it dangle so I can work up close. And I'm just drafting out the fibers and letting the twist come up. This is kind of unwinding more than I want it to, so I'm going to let it spin. You're just inching your way along the fiber and adding twist as you go. Now you can see this is very softly spun. Then I wind it on. Once you're more familiar with parking and drafting, go ahead and try just drafting while the spindle is suspended in midair. And if you need to give it another little twist, you can. Now my spindle's almost down at the floor, and I'm going to wind on. That's all there is to spinning on a high whirl spindle. Add the twist and draft. When you run out of fiber, you'll just get another piece of of roving, whether it's, it's roving or a, um, hand carded wool, um, a roll log, a puny, get another bit of fiber and add it on. You can see the high roll spindle really is a very efficient spinning tool. And again, you don't have to add a lot of twist. You want enough to hold it together but you don't want to make rope. The more fiber you draft out, the thicker your yarn will be. This is actually thick enough that you could probably use it for socks without plying. I would probably ply it and then I would have a, a two-ply, um, probably a sport weight or a, a light bulky, and it would be perfect for hat or mittens. Happy spindling. I wanted you to see how softly spun this yarn is. You can't really tell when it's all stretched out, but when I let it relax, you can see it's very softly spun. It's not over twisted at all. You can also see the nice neat cop that I'm building. Now, I can put quite a, a big cop on this spindle. 